Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about designing qualitative methodology. So when you are writing your proposal or you are first designing your qualitative methodology, you will likely need to discuss many of the characteristics of qualitative research. So there are a few things that you'll need to consider and include in your proposal or in your introduction. Um, so you need to discuss the natural setting. Um, so in qualitative research, we tend to go to participants and work with them in their settings. Um, so you'll want to discuss whether that's what you intend to do, why or why not, what is that setting. Um, you'll need to discuss that uh, in qualitative research, the researcher themselves are the key instrument. Um, so the researcher might also use open-ended instruments or something to, to guide um, their observations or their interviewing. So they might use some kind of instrument as a guide. Uh, but generally speaking, the researcher themself, themselves <laughs> are the uh, actual instruments that are collecting the data in qualitative research. Um, also, we triangulate. So in qualitative methodology, you collect information from multiple sources of data, which adds to um, the comprehensive nature of the study so that you can fully understand a certain phenomenon or event. Um, qualitative methodology might be inductive or deductive in design, um, so you'll want to discuss which of those it will be. So inductive meaning um, that it develops theory and identifies themes based on the data. So you're starting kind of open and allowing uh, theory to emerge based on the data that's collected in the study versus deductive. You're starting with a theory as a lens or as a guiding um, a guiding idea and using that to develop questions and then collect data. So you want to specify which uh, type that you are using. Um, you want to discuss participants' meanings, meaning that in qualitative research, we have to be very careful to study and collect and understand the true meaning of what the participants are trying to express and not be colored or biased by um, the meanings or definitions or things that we've already seen in the literature or seen or experienced in other settings, that you want to truly try to capture the participants' meanings um, in your study. An emergent design is an adaptability of design. So although you're going to design your methodology up front, you might design it uh, with the idea that um, your design might evolve and adapt depending on what data you are collecting and, and what you find as you go. So things might need to remain a little bit flexible. Reflexivity is when the researcher is acknowledging their own role in the research and is also reflecting on and discussing um, any judgments, practices, or beliefs that they might hold that might affect how they're collecting or interpreting the data in the study. Um, so reflexivity is very important because, um, again, the researcher is the key instrument and the researcher is very involved with participants and in the collection of data um, and in the interpretation of that data. So it's really important for the researcher to really reflect on um, their own beliefs and ideas and experiences so that they're minimizing how much those are um, tainting or um, coloring, discoloring the um, outcomes or the interpretation of the data, the data and the participants' meanings that are being collected. A holistic account is the idea that in qualitative research, we are attempting to look at all sides and all parts of a complex phenomenon. So we're seeing the problem as a whole. Um, and so we partly do that by collecting multiple sources of data. That's one aspect is that we're able to um, collect all sorts of information from different sources um, because we're trying to look at the phenomenon as a whole. Um, so you're also going to, besides discussing those characteristics of qualitative research and which apply to this study, um, you're also going to need to describe the procedures for data collection, analysis, and writing. 
Um, so what kind of data are you collecting? How are you collecting it? What is your plan to analyze that data once you've collected it? And what is your plan for writing your research report after you've analyzed that data? Uh, so considerations for the researcher. Um, so in qualitative research, the researcher is very involved and often has been involved and has experience with participants or in a certain setting. Um, and so it's very important that the researcher reflect on that and write about it and share that with the reader. Um, because we need to be able, as the reader, we need to be able to reflect on whether we think the researcher remained objective enough or had enough knowledge of the participants and the phenomenon to be able to interpret it correctly. Um, so it just helps the reader to be able to see um, that you are fully understanding those participants but are not overstepping um, or that there are no ethical issues. Um, so you'll want to discuss any past experiences that you've had with participants or in that setting or with that research problem. Um, comment on how those experiences have shaped your perceptions and interpretations of the data. Uh, comment on the connection between researchers, participants, or the site that may influence interpretations, and comment on ethical issues that could potentially arise. Um, yeah, let's keep going here. Okay, so uh, you'll also need to discuss your plan for getting IRB approval and your plan for accessing the setting or the participants within that setting. Um, so when it comes to indicating steps to get IRB permission, um, it often is just a, a simple statement that you are going to apply for IRB approval, um, but there could be more to that discussion depending on possible ethical considerations, so you might have more to say. Um, like if your study involves some kind of deception, as an example, um, then you might want to um, discuss that a little bit more and about how you're going to get IRB approval in light of this potential ethical concern. Um, and you would want to highlight why it is not an ethical concern, why it is in fact an ethical study to conduct. Um, then you want to discuss the steps for gaining entry into the setting. So like, let's say you want to conduct a study at a school or at a hospital or who knows where there are so many places that that would be an issue where there might be gatekeepers, people who would be the ones to grant you access or deny you. Um, so you need to have a plan in place for who are those gatekeepers? How are you going to approach them? Um, and do you expect or have you already been uh, granted access to that population? Um, so when you are approaching gatekeepers, you might and probably will need to give some kind of proposal that gives them information inflammation, information about the study that you plan to conduct. So why are you choosing that site? Um, what are you planning to do at that site or with the participant, with the participants that are being protected by that site, by that organization? Um, when you conduct your study, will it be disruptive? And that could be like you're making a lot of noise or you're interrupting their daily schedule or you know, that could mean a lot of different things. Is it gonna be disruptive to some aspect of their operations? Um, how will the results be reported? So you wanna be really clear about, um, you know, are, is all of the data going to be de-identified? Is it gonna be reported completely, com or not confidentially, but completely anonymously? Uh, will the site be identifiable when you report on your research or will it be, will it be able to remain anonymous? Um, and it, it really it depends because you might intend for the site and the participants and everyone to remain anonymous, but if you're collecting certain types of data that sometimes really narrows down who or where you are talking about. So be really clear about how you plan to report your results. Um, and be really honest, you know, if it's, if it might be nearly impossible to keep the identity of the site, um, 
confidential or, or anonymous, then be really honest about that and, and say so. And so that the gatekeepers can then um, make an educated, informed decision based on the truth of how you plan to report it. Um, and then, of course, what will the gatekeeper gain from the study? So how is this study going to benefit the site or the gatekeepers themselves? Okay, so you're doing a study at a hospital or at a school. Well, how will collecting this information and learning about this topic at that school or hospital, how is that going to benefit those institutions or the gatekeepers who are allowing you access? All right, that is all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching.